Hi, welcome to Snakes and Addos. We're continuing our introducing series by today discussing these guys, which are called Crested Geckos. Crested Geckos were once thought to be almost extinct, uh, way back in 1994, and then through breeding successes and being released, released into a uh, private hands, they've gone on to uh, pretty much conquer the lizard world, uh, and they're now up there easily in the top three, top four species of lizards kept in captivity. The reason being, they're hardy, tame, easily maintained, they breed readily uh, and, you know, very, very popular because of this gorgeous face and just how uh, calm as adults they are. So, basics, what do we need to know? Your lizard originates from a group of islands called New Caledonia off the coast of Australia. Uh, they are on the way to Fiji. Uh, they are endemic, this, this species, to an area called South Province in New Caledonia. So what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to introduce some climate data for an area called Numea, which is in the south province of New Caledonia. There seems to be lots and lots of information, different takes on husbandry and all the rest of it. So all I'm going to do is give you our version of events. Obviously, there are different ways to skin a cat. Uh, and because they're such a popular species, there is no sort of shortage of information on them. They are arboreal, they're tree climbers, they're going to they're gonna go upwards, so we're going to set up a tall tank. Usually with babies, people buy the 12 by 12 by 18 tall Exoterra, Komodo or Zoomed glass terrariums. Uh, as adults, people usually move up into the 18 by 18 by 24 tall. These animals are going to be forest tanks, so we're going to set them up with tropical damp substrate that we can spray to raise the humidity to aid with shedding the skin. A lot of people set up bioactive tanks, which include the live plants as well. You don't have to do this. You can use artificial plants. You can spray your tank as well. When it comes to temperature, that's where I have a slight disconnect with some of the stuff that goes on. When we consider other reptiles that we keep, whether they be corn snakes, king snakes, uh, bearded dragons, usually we're keeping their warm end upwards of their daily maximum that you would be able to get on their climate data when you download it from Google and I will obviously I've downloaded this climate data which I'm going to share next to the video for Numea and what it shows is during January and February the highs can reach as much as 29 30 degrees Celsius on different sets of data that I've also got which I'll share as well they show max highs of nearly 32 degrees Celsius now, I am not saying under no circumstances do we keep crested geckos at that temperature. That could be problematic specifically in captivity. But we do need to provide an element of heat. Animals' uh, immune system and immune response and the way that they digest their food is affected by the temperature at which they can lay. So what we tend to do is we mount a heat pad, what a self-adhesive heat pad, to the one upper side of a tank. And then we use a thermostat with the probe on the inner glass and we're going to set that to about 28 degrees Celsius. What this does is it allows the animal to bask on that surface, aid with digestion, aid with immuno response. When the animal is warm enough, it can then move to the other side of the tank. We call this process thermoregulation. There are certain uh, branches of big chain stores that will push these geckos solely as unheated room temperature reptiles which in Britain, which is where we're recording this video, I would really advise against. The reason being, I live in a two bedroom drafty mid terraced house built in 1902 with no wall cavity insulation. And when we're out at work, we have the heating on. We don't put the heating on until we get back in. This means the temperature in our house can drop pretty low. And if we were to just leave a crestie to crack on and get on with it, with a room temperature of 17, 18 degrees, that won't do this guy much good. So it's definitely worth involving a little bit of common sense. So when you look at the climate data for Numea, which is in the South Province, you will see just how many months they spend at the slightly warmer temperatures. Because they're ready breeders, the females will breed all year round if we let them. The problem is if that happens, we deplete the calcium stores that they've got. This can lead to something called metabolic bone disease. So it's important that we use a broad spectrum multivitamin powder, which has got vitamin D3 as part of its makeup. You could also use low level UV, but these animals are nocturnal, so you may find they hide away more during the day if the low level UV is on. The seasonal change in cooling them down will stop them from breeding, and it will also just give the females a chance to just recharge their batteries before they uh, hit another breeding season. Of course, 
there is no need for you to breed them. This is just information in case you want to have a go. As a pet, when you get it, as a baby, they are very skittish and they bounce all over the place. Don't panic, they are going to calm down. But it's easy for them to hurt themselves through over exuberance. So I would keep your handling sessions down to probably four or five minutes at a time. There are complete diets on the market and they are like they're omnivores. They're gonna naturally they'd have taken fallen fruits and other items as well as insects. And complete diets have been developed by Smiths, Rapashi, Pangea, as well as other wholesalers, different manufacturers take. They are pushed as a complete diet. And I don't necessarily go along with that either. If you've ever seen the way that baby cresties or even adult cresties go after their live foods, they enjoy the hunt. This keeps them fit, keeps their muscle tone strong, and it gives us a vessel with which to put our additional calcium powders like Repton, Nutribol, onto their diet and make sure that they get it as part of their makeup. The uh, diets are excellent, and the way that they've been developed, they've done some really good research, and you can use them. You're going to replace that two or three times a week. And then once or twice a week, I would also use live foods. So that's my take on it. Humidity wise, we're going to spray them every day. If we notice that they're going through a shed, we may spray more heavily to try and keep that humidity up to get the skin off. The, air, the skin might collect on their feet and we need to make sure that that skin's completely cleared because it may affect the way that they can climb up the glass. Their feet are amazing. The flat pads that you can see on the toes, these are called scanser pads. And on those scanser pads, they're covered in something called lamilla. These lamellae are like rod-like structures, and they are covered in something called setae, which are like uh, tiny little spatulas, microscopic. And the way that your gecko can climb glass and climb on the surface is because these setae utilize a force known as the van der Waals force. This is a basically subatomic attraction force. And they are that small, they can use that force to hold on to a surface. That is absolutely amazing. And the science is insane. So you can look that up, Van der Waals force. Really interesting read. You'll notice when a gecko walks, it always curls its toes backwards first before it moves forwards. This is because the force disengages at about 30 degrees. So uh, what you'll do is they'll fall back and then move forward and then engage and then they're stuck on the grip power is absolutely amazing what you'll also notice with this adult female is she's missing her tail unlike some other geckos they don't regenerate i've got this one out particularly to show you because obviously this is a relatively common thing most wild crested geckos are wandering around without their tail and it doesn't seem to affect their life in too much of a way Preferably, we're always going to try and keep their tail intact. It's semi-prehensile, used for balance and gripping branches. And on the end of the tail, there is also another patch of lamellae and setae to help hold on to a surface. They have a fixed brill. They do not have eyelids, so when they need to clean their eye, you'll see, as you saw a moment ago, they lick the eye, give it a clean. So ciliatus, which is Corylophus ciliatus, is their new Latin name. They used to be classed in a family called Rachidactylus. But the ciliatus refers to the eyelids and the eyelashes. So what we need to consider is a tall tank, a heated area to about 27, 28 degrees Celsius that they can move away from. It's going to be heavily planted or we're going to use artificial plants. We'll use vertical hides or tubes of cork bark for them to hide in. Two or three times a week we're going to provide a complete diet as a powder form and we're also going to use live foods with a broad spectrum multivitamin calcium as well. You will absolutely have no issues with Cresties, they are fabulous. Now, what I would say with regarding to breeding is only do it if you're prepared, you're geared up and you know what you're doing. They will breed readily and they will produce multiple eggs. The female can store sperm so she doesn't need to mate multiple times to lay multiple clutches. So you can breed them once, think, oh well we've had our two eggs, that's it. No, it's not the case. She'll continue laying the eggs as long as the sperm is viable. So it's important that you take that risk into consideration. Females will exhaust their bodily stores and calcium for the sake of reproduction. So that's something to bear in mind. So research the Latin name Corylophus ciliatus. And there is another species as well called Corylophus saracenorum or saracens gecko, which was also put into this group. 
You'll notice when you're doing your research that a lot of times crested geckos come up in the family Rachidactylus, and they used to be classed in there along with the gargoyle geckos and the New Caledonian giant geckos, but it was decided that they were different enough that they needed to go into their own family. So, also, midsummer, I best mention this, I mean it's winter now, but summer will be rolling around soon enough. We can get too hot and you need to move your animal into a cooler end of the house. It's very important. We do not want them to suffer with heat exhaustion. Uh, look at the date, climate data that we've included. And I hope the video has been useful. We'll continue our introducing series. And uh, yeah, we'll keep rolling on. But yeah, consider a crested gecko. They're fantastic. Visit the website, which is www.snakesandadders.co.uk to see what we're all about. Cheers.